In this presentation, we will create a sales receipt within QuickBooks Pro 2019. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are on the home page. We currently have the open windows open. The open windows can be found in the view tab. Go into the open windows list. We're going to be in the home page looking in the customers section. What we're going to do now is create a sales receipt. When would we create a sales receipt? You may ask. Well, we're going to create a sales receipt when we make a sale and receive payment at the same point in time. This being very similar but slightly different to us creating an invoice. An invoice is kind of like a bill for the client. You can imagine us creating an invoice for work done and then mailing it or emailing it to a client and receiving payment in the future often done for service companies uh, and and so we would do work and then bill the client we can imagine the sales receipt as something that would happen that uh, we would receive payment at the same point in time so if we did like a food service company or something like that of course and then we would be recording the the sale and collecting payment at the same point in time and therefore, we would bypass this kind of receive payment section of, because these two things uh, net out to the same point that a sales re receipt would be. In other words, if we billed someone and then received payment, then we would basically be at the same point as if we created a sales receipt and got payment at the same point in time. That's why this one's kind of starting here in the flow chart. So we're going to receive payment. Then we're going to group all those payments together and deposit them into the bank account. Now note once again, as we receive payment here, we're going to make the sale at the same point in time. That's going to be different than the receive payment icon. The create sales receipt will be a time when we receive payment, but it's different from this receive payment because this receive payment means we're receiving payment for an invoice that happened in the past and it will be reducing accounts receivable. This create sales receipt means that we are receiving a payment, but it's for work that we're doing at this current point in time. So in our example, we can imagine we're selling a guitar, we're in the store, someone comes up to us in the store with a guitar, and uh, we sell them at that point in time and they pay us at that point in time. Uh, that's when we would create this sales receipt. So we're gonna go ahead and go into the sales receipt here. Uh, it's going to look very similar to the invoice. We're going to start off with the customer name and uh, we're going to see if there's a name here. We got string music is what we want. It's not here, so we're going to type it. I could go to new, but I'm going to add it up top. I'm just going to type in string music and then I'm going to select tab. QuickBooks says, hey, we don't have that. Do you want to set it up? We could set it up with the with a full setup, which you may want to do because we may, we may want the number the email address of the customer and whatnot so we can keep contact with them. But all we really need at this time to finish the document will be the name. So we're gonna add the quick add for our example. We're gonna use this template. Uh, the, the amount we're gonna say cash that we got received, we could choose any amount that will help us track the amount or the type of payment we got. We're gonna say what happened on the 16th. So what I'm gonna do, instead of typing in the 16th, I'm gonna just hit the plus arrow, one, two, three, four times to get it up to the 16th. I'll keep the number, which will automatically populate. The uh, sold to here, we have here, we have no address because we didn't fill that into the customer field. And then uh, no check number, item. So the item is gonna be an Epiphone semi hollow wood. If we select the drop down, uh, we should be able to find an Epiphone semi hollow wood here. The, the name of it is gonna be a W wild i'm not sure exactly why but that's going to be the name the the item number so remember the item number or the item name we have here is going to be a short name uh, for this product so there's what we have we're going to say tab uh, the tax is going to be a taxable it is going to be taxable because we're selling inventory meaning sales tax there'll be sales tax on it quantity we're going to say is uh one rate 400 amount 400 then we see the five percent sales tax this is the amount we're going to get i'm going to minimize this a little bit so we can see more of the window minimize this item so we can see more of the window here now like the invoice there's a lot more be this this form drives a lot 
that into the system. Of course, when we get payment, we expect to get $420, get the cash, easy to do from the register standpoint from us receiving payment. From the recording of this, it's a bit more complex. If we think about this, what is this gonna do? Well, the sales receipt means that uh, we're gonna get cash. So we're going, that's, that's gonna be the first thing that's gonna happen, we're gonna get cash. Now, it's not gonna go typically to the um, checking account. However, it's once again gonna default to the undeposited funds unless we change that as the default option because what we wanna, if we're making sales in the store, we want to make all of our sales and then deposit at one time at the end of the day so that the grouping of our deposit matches the grouping that will be on the bank statement. So that will be the default option. So cash is going to go up, but it will be undeposited funds. The other side is going to be sales. Now the sales is going to go up, but it's not going to go up by 420, which is the amount of cash we're going to get. It's going to go up by 400 because that's the amount we get to keep. The added 20 is going to have to go somewhere else. It's going to go to a liability sales tax payable liability because we owe it to whoever we're paying sales tax to like the state our sales tax usage tax and then that's not all that happens either because we're selling a guitar which is inventory so inventory needs to be decreased it's not going to be decreased by four hundred dollars however because that's the sales price that's not what we bought it for we don't even see the amount that we we're going to have inventory decrease by where would we find it lists chart of accounts we're going to look for that epiphone hollow wood and we're going to oh i'm sorry not chart of accounts i'm going to close that back out lists items list <laughs> and then we're going to look for that that item so which item was is this hollow wood 400 if we double click on that here's the cost of goods sold so quickbooks knows what it is we'll record it with the sales receipt form but not put it on the sales receipt form because we don't want to provide that information to the customer. So note everything that QuickBooks is really doing here, a lot of action happening with this one form, the form being pretty simple so that anybody can really fill it out. Someone at the desk can fill out pretty easily without really understanding what's happening, of course, within the QuickBooks system in terms of the inventory transaction that's happening and the accounts that are being affected in the system. So I'm going to close this back out. We'll close this back out. So let's record this and see if it does that. We'll, we'll go to the financial statements and see what happens. So we're going to save and close. We're going to go then to the reports up top. Going to go to the fine company and financials. Let's start off with the balance sheet standard. Going to change the dates up here in the customized reports. And the dates are going to be 010119 to 123119, this being the period we will be working in January 1st to December 2019. Say OK. Only shows one date because the range will help us as we double click on these items and see what the activity is. Again, it's not going to go into cash because we're not using that as the default. Instead, it's going to go into the undeposited funds. So if we go into undeposited funds, we're then going to see that 420, double click it on that, there's our sales receipt. So we're going to close this back out, close this back out. And uh, so we're going to have to deposit these, of course, at some point to the checking account, hopefully daily at the end of the day, we're going to do that. And then the other side of it, and this problem might be a little bit out of order, we should deposit every day, that would be <laughs> the best way to go. We don't want to be holding on to a bunch of deposits without going to the bank with them. So that's going to be the undeposited funds. The other side is going to be on the income statement or profit and loss. So let's go to the reports drop down, company and financial, and then go to the profit and loss standard. Change the dates 010119 to 123119. There it is. There's our revenue. I'm going to double click on that. And this time we, we, we have the 400, not the, four, uh, the, 410, the 420, I think we saw before. If I double click on it, we're going to say there's the 400, not the 420. The difference of 20 isn't going to be in our sales, although we collected it because we owe it to the state. So I'm going to close this back to the balance sheet. We can close this. I'm going to close this. We'll go back to the balance sheet. 
look for that other 20, which is going to be a liability. It's going to be a liability to sales tax payable. Double clicking on sales tax payable, we'll see there's that 20 right there. Double clicking on that, we're back to our sales receipt. Okay, so that's not even the whole story right there, however, because we also have the inventory that's got to go down. So I'm going to close this out, close this out. Inventory is going to be an asset. It must have decreased because we sold a guitar. So here's the inventory. If we double click on that, we sold it to string music, but it's for 320. If I double click on this item, I don't see 320 on this form at all. It's not there. Why not? Because we don't want to put the cost on the form, although we want to use the form to record the cost. So where could we find the cost if we wanted to know what it was? Lists, items, and then we would look for that, that particular item. And that particular item was a Epiphone Semi Hollywood. So if we take a look at that, there's the cost, 320. So the, these, these items are used to drive the cost even though they're not on the document. I'm closing these out as you, and then I'm going to close this back out. So that's what we have there. So the other side is going to be in the profit and loss, profit and loss, cost of goods sold, the expense related to us selling the guitar here. Double clicking on that item, we have string guitar 320. Double clicking on that. And here we have it. Again, it's not on this form, but this form is used to record it. Closing this back out. Closing this back out. Again, there's our net income here. So sales went up, revenue went up, as did cost of goods sold. The net change would be reflected in net income and gross profit. So let's do this again. We're going to go back to the home page. Back to the home page, we're going to go to uh, the create sales receipt one more time. We had another person come into the store and we're going to put them as the customer of Sam the Guitar Man. So Sam, we don't have it, so I'm going to add Sam the Guitar Man. And we're going to say tab. And again, I'm not, I'm not going to add all the detail, we're just going to add the quick add for the new customer. We're going to say that, uh, once again, we're going to keep it at cash or cash or check. And we're going to tab through this. We're going to say 16th, same. Sales number, same. Ship to. Uh, it's, it, we're going to keep the, the name there. We would have the address if we had filled out the more detailed address fields. And then we're going to say that, uh, in this case, we're going to say that we did services for Sam. Uh, some guitar services rather than selling a guitar. So we're going to say that we had some diagnostics. I'm not sure what a diagnostic is on a guitar, but we're going to say that we had diagnostics services rather than a sales item. And so we can once again find that in the drop down or type in the service tab diagnostic. We're going to make sure that the guitar is okay. And then we're going to say tap no sales tax. Notice the drop down. Why? Because it's a service now. And typically sales tax with most places, if there's a sales or usage tax, will usually apply to uh, inventory and not so much to a service. So we don't have sales tax on this item. We're going to say one here and 68 will be the amount. And we also did some hourly service. And so we're going to have that. Once again, I typed in there the service. That's going to be non-inventory, therefore no tax. It's going to be a service rather than us selling inventory. One and tabbing through. Now note that this this form is going to is um, looks the same, but what QuickBooks is doing is something that's going to be a lot more simplistic because there's no inventory. So for example, what's the journal entry related to this form, a service form, similar to us if we were basically doing bookkeeping at at one point in time. And, and given the payment for the bookkeeping for the services at that point in time, it would be a debit to cash, but in our case, undeposited funds, because we haven't gone to the bank yet, credit to sales or revenue, fees earned, whatever we call our, our income account. And that's it. We don't have sales tax we have to deal with. We don't have inventory we have to deal with. We're not decreasing inventory and increasing cost of goods sold. So therefore, just keep in mind that if you're dealing with a company that wants to track inventory within the company system, that adds a lot of complexity. If you're dealing with a company that will not be dealing with inventory, 
within the system either because they don't have inventory or because they're not tracking inventory through QuickBooks, then that's going to be a lot easier to set up because the tracking of inventory, the recording of inventory and cost of goods sold does add a level of confusion complication. So I'm going to say uh, save and close. And let's see if that does, well, we'll see what it does. We're going to go to the balance sheet over here. And we're going to say, once again, undeposited funds. Here's undeposited funds. Let's double clicking on that. We're going to find the uh, five, well, here's Sam the Guitar Man, two, 208. Double clicking on that. There's our sales receipt. Closing this back out. Closing this back out. Other side, profit and loss or income statement. We're going to go to merchandise sales. Double clicking on merchandise sales. There's, um, actually it's not merchandise sales, closing that back out. We didn't sell merchandise. We had a service, so it went to services. These are our two kinds of inventory uh, uh, sales items. Now note, we could get more detailed. We could even say like what type of guitar. We could have called this guitar sales. We could have said a specific guitar. But these are the two groupings that would be most standard. Did we sell goods or do we have, did we make revenue from services? So we're gonna say services. And there we have it, uh, these two items. If we double click, then there's the sales receipt. Closing this back out. So we're back on the balance sheet. Note that we have all this in undeposited funds and we need to go to the deposit. Now we did that of course in the practice problem because we wanna go through and group some of these transactions in the same area so we can take a look at some of the variation between them. But uh, obviously in practice, you'd wanna make a deposit every day. You know, you want, we don't wanna be holding on to money in the undeposit fund if this account is too high or we don't have something to deposit in there something happened we have a problem if we go back to the home page we note that the deposit screen has five items now it's indicating that uh, we should go to the bank with and uh, and deposit so we're going to do that shortly for more accounting information and accounting courses visit our website at accountinginstruction.info